Greetings, viewers. Remember the home theater PC upgrade video? This is the evicted hardware from that machine. The Gigabyte B450M DS3H with the AMD R3-2200G CPU. 80 gigabytes of memory. It's not anything particularly fancy. Just some cheap stuff. I think it's only like 2400 megahertz. I don't know what is it saying? Oh, it's 2666. Ooh, fancy. Wow, I thought it was only 2400, but I guess it's a little better than that. Anyway, this is a very nice piece of hardware, and yet here it is sitting in this box, or it was sitting in this box, and has been sitting unused. Now, why has it been sitting unused? Well, there's one key problem with this hardware platform, for at least any of the uses that I would have. You can see here that it's got three slots, all of which are PCI Express. There is no PCI on this. The other big issue comes in the form of rear I.O. Can you see what's missing? A close look at the ports. Did you see it? Well, if you didn't, there's a VGA, or VGA, there's an HDMI there and a DVI there. There's no no VGA. And normally I could excuse that because usually the DVI port is DVI-I. You can see very clearly it's not, so there is no way to hook up a VGA monitor. This is digital monitor only. Which restricts me to very few things that I could have. Now I've got a, a monitor with a DVI port there. It's plugged into, I think, the SLI computer down there. Obviously, this is not going to run an SLI setup, so not go, not, that's not going to happen. What about this? Capture PC. Well, it's VGA, and it needs a PCI, so not working in there. This thing, it needs PCI, so it's not working in there. I think it's also VGA anyway. Those two are obviously VGA, and they've got dedicated uses, so we're not going to put it there. All right, well, what else? Well, there's a PC right there. That's my Linux test PC. But it's VGA, so it's not going in there. I could put it in my main rig, but that's uh, obviously going to be a massive downgrade. I'm not going to go in there. What about it in the studio? Well, the only place that it could go is in the stream encoder computer, and that needs PCI. So it's not going in there either. And obviously it's not going anywhere in the server rack because, well, I can't plug into VGA monitor. So, you can see quite clearly that we don't have anywhere where this can go. So what's the solution? It used to be that HDMI to VGA adapters were big, gigantic boxes that cost like $50 a piece. At least that's what I remember anyway. But I guess, you know, time and technology serves to make things small and cheap. So here is just a generic HDMI to VGA adapter with the audio, which is good because I do want to have the audio. It is an active adapter, so it does require power, but it looks like it gets that power off of the USB bus on the computer, so it's very useful. But where's it going to go? I've decided to put it in here. This is my Linux test PC. Right there. Which right now if we take a look, has got an Intel Core i5 3570 CPU, as well as 8 gigabytes of memory, and you can get an idea for the specifications. I may post a link to this Geekbench result, assuming there's nothing personally identifiable in it, and assuming that it actually will still work by the time you look at it, but I don't think there's any I don't think there's anything really that is particularly private on this. Either way, the scores that matter are the two that are right there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to boot this thing up, take an image of the drive, and then I'm going to swap the hardware. I would like to take an image of this drive, because this is the drive that's going to go in there because it goes with that hardware. I'd like to take an image of it before I use it. 
and just get data off of it if I need to. I might actually already have an image of that, so I may not need to waste my time. But then I'm going to put the Linux image on that and hope that it's actually going to boot, because I don't know. It may not on a system that modern. I may need to do some voodoo magic with respect to secure boot and UEFI and all that other stuff that manufacturers have decided is so much better than the stuff that actually works. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. So I'm going to do some prep work and then we'll get this thing ready to PXE boot so I can take a backup. Okay, so we're pretty much done with this as it is. So I'm going to reboot the computer. I don't remember if it's F8 or F12 that's the key to get into the boot menu on this machine. I think it's F8 because it's an Asus motherboard. Alright. I want to boot to the IBA GE. That's the network. Should boot DHCP. Or maybe it just won't work. There we go. It's kind of slow for some reason. I want to boot to the fog server to do this backup. That's how I want to do this. Okay, here we go. We're going to perform a full host registration. Which better actually work. BIOS bugs. Yay! Isn't that fun? But this should be a relatively easy process. Okay. So, I'm going to go into setup again. Although I'm going to, well, actually, I'm not going to go into setup again. I want to press F8. It ignored me. What a piece of crap. Okay, come over to Fog Server. Go to Tasks. We'll list the hosts. This old Linux thing, which is entered improperly because my keyboard's a piece of garbage. I want to capture. Alright, so if we view active tasks, we now have a task that is active. So now, when we go to boot to the network, which is a lot faster for some reason, we go to the fog server. do what it needs to do, now it's going to be automatic. So we'll let boot. Which takes a little bit of time for some reason. So now it's doing it's doing its little thing. You can see over here it's now actually doing something. So we'll come back once this process is finished. Okay, so here is the existing machine. You can see the one problem is that we've only got a four pin CPU power connector where both this existing board and the new board need an eight pin. Hopefully it will be just fine running from the four pins. You can see the RAM. I think that was the last upgrade I did on this. And the SSD, which is just kind of haphazardly screwed in there. I'm going to pull all that out, including these red cables, because I think that these cables are kind of dumb. I'm going to replace them with, you know, actual decent cables. And uh, One thing I won't be able to hook up is the front panel 1394 but I don't really find myself needing it anyway, so who cares. So I'm going to get all this stuff cleared out, and then we'll get the new board in place. You can see just how clean it actually is. I'm kind of surprised it's not choke full of dust. There it is all nice and bare. I did put the new I.O. plate in, though. Hopefully I'm not going to have to rejig too much stuff in order to fit the new board in. I really like this feature got the nice little centering peg. I don't really think this plate is in here properly, but 
I'm going to assume that it is. Okay, there is everything hooked up. Didn't really need a whole lot in terms of rejigging of cabling. It actually was pretty good. My adapter bracket is backwards, so I can only put one screw in. So that's kind of annoying. But I didn't really feel like pulling four screws out in order to get two screws into the side. So it'll be fine. It's an SSD. It's mounted in there good enough anyway. So now I just got to hook up the external cabling and hope that this thing is actually going to work. Okay, time to see how many cables I've got hooked up backwards. See if we can actually get it set up here. Okay, stupid power cable on the camera decided to get snagged, but I want to double check this and see, you know, you can see Windows Boot Manager. CSM support is disabled. I want that on. PXE Boot ROM should be on. We'll set the storage boot option to UEFI. How about that? And we'll see what happens. Okay, so let's see if this will actually even work. If I go to the real tech, is it going to actually boot correctly? Alright, oh, it looks like it actually might. Cool, that's actually impressive. I thought it would do some UEFI crap and mess the whole thing up. So we'll go through the same process and restore the image to the drive and see if it will actually start. I might have to turn it to legacy boot in order for that to work. I'm not sure yet. Oh look, it failed. Isn't that fun? I'm not sure why it failed. It's rather odd considering the image was fine when it was backed up. And now all of a sudden it's not. It's the first time I've ever had an error with that. Maybe we'll try it again, I don't know. Okay, well I couldn't get that to work, so let's try the other option. Install from scratch. Let's see if that will actually work. Somehow or another, because life is hilarious, it probably won't. Okay, well, thanks to the stupid camera, being stupid, I missed the start of the boot-up process. But it looks like it is actually going to work. And it's not logging in automatically, of course not. Even though I selected for it to log me on automatically. That's, that's dumb. That's, that's dumb. On a single user system like this, it's dumb. It should never even have the option to enter a password to log in. Okay. So, since I had to do a fresh install, which, by the way, is actually working under UEFI mode, somehow, now we get to do data recovery. Isn't that entertaining? Oh, I guess I've got, uh... Oh, I guess I had it set up with a separate home directory. Oh, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this. That was relatively easy. So now you gotta take that out, put the cover on, and put it in its permanent home. Last thing to do is run Geekbench, and we'll have our comparison. There you can see the score. I would have expected a little bit more of an improvement. What improvement's improvement, I guess. I think the AES is a whole lot better. So that's kind of neat. Well, as it turns out, there are actually system updates, which is kind of surprising considering I installed over the network, but oh well. So we'll go ahead and we'll install those, but I'm not going to waste your time on this video with that, so. With that, I bid you adieu for today.